We're going to solve this dynamic optimization problem. This is example number two uh, that you'll find if you come to the dynamic optimization uh, website. Uh, let me just show you how to navigate to that. Uh, just come to apmonitor.com slash do and then that'll um, bring you to the main page. If you come to the uh, application section, then you'll see benchmarks and go ahead and select that. And uh, we previously covered uh, example 1A and 1B, and there you can see the video. And so this one is going to be example number two. Okay, so just a little bit more complicated, uh, four equations uh, instead of two. And uh, let's just go through this one. So um, the statement is to minimize the value of x4. Okay, so that's our uh, fourth uh, variable that you can see here. We're gonna minimize that just at the final time. So it has a profile, it starts with a value of zero. Okay, and then these dynamic equations will uh, determine its path. And what we wanna do is um, minimize the final value, okay, of um, x4. Okay, but we also have x1, x2, and x3. Um, so here's an equation that helps us uh, decide the value of x1, x2, x3, and then x4. Uh, we have initial conditions for each of those. So we have um, a value of 0 for x1, negative 1 for x2, negative uh, square root of 5 for x3, and then 0 for x4. We need to have our u values uh, stay between 4, negative 4 and 10. And we're going to be starting uh, from 0 and then computing all the way to a value of 1. Okay, so to do this, um, we're going to, uh, first of all, write our uh, model equations in the AP Monitor um, modeling language. And uh, so to do that, uh, we'll just have, first of all, a parameter section. Um, so we're going to create a couple parameters, uh, P and then U. U had to be between negative 4 and 10. And then we have some variables as well. We have x1, x2, x3, and x4. And there you can see the initial conditions for each of them. Uh, we also have this time, uh, t. And we need that because um, you know here we also have time in our expression. So this is going to grow with time. Okay, so if I plot uh, time, normally I plot something like x4 versus time, and then I have something like that. This one's just going to be time versus time, and so that's just going to be a slope of 1. Okay, so there's time. Uh, so as it increases, this term is going to get larger right there. All right, so uh, let's keep going through the model. Uh, we have some equations as well. We're going to minimize um, the final value of x4. And what we'll see is uh, we just multiply by a value of p, and then p um, versus time. Okay, p is just going to be 0 everywhere, and then just right at the last uh, final time, um, it's going to be equal to 1. Okay, so that basically just turns on the objective function right at the last. We're not trying to minimize the value of x4 uh, any point in the, in the past. Okay, so um, let's keep going uh, through this. We have uh, derivative of time equals 1. Okay, so that gives us this slope right here, uh, the slope. So dt, dt equals 1. We just stated that so we can get our time variable in the problem. Um, and then we have the derivative. Uh, the dollar sign is the derivative value. Um, so this is just this first equation right here. Uh, derivative of x1 equals x2. And then we have our second equation uh, right here that we just inserted as well. There's x3. And then x4 is just a little bit, um, you know, just a little bit more complicated but not, uh, not too bad, okay? So there is, our, um, there is our model file. Okay, so now let's go over and do a data file as well. I'm just gonna open up Excel. Um, now what I'll do is uh, just create a couple columns here. Uh, the first one, I'm just gonna have time. And I wanna go uh, all the way to one. So I filled in to point one. And then let me just go all the way down to uh, one with uh, that interval 0 0.01. You'll see I also made a 
thousandths of a thousandth of a of a time interval there just at the first. Um, that's just so that you'll have a manipulated variable change right there just in the first interval so it's insensitive to the initial conditions. The other thing I want are my um, these p-values as I mentioned before zero everywhere except for that final point um, and that's going to be equal to one. Okay so we'll go ahead and save this. Um, do we want to keep it in the format? Just go ahead and click yes. This is in a CSV format. Go file, save as, and then um, you know if it asks you then uh, save it as a, uh, uh, a CSV file. Okay, so we're going to do it in, in here. And you want to make sure that it's going to be a comma delimited. There's some other options for CSV. Make sure you don't save it in the Mac uh, format. Uh, it needs to have a uh, comma delimited there as a CSV. Okay, so um, go ahead and save that. Um, okay. And then if I close it, uh, it'll say, do you want to save your changes? Go ahead and click don't save. You've already saved those. Okay. And then if I open up this folder again, I have this CSV file here. If I just open it up with something like notepad, I'll see my time values and also these P values just separated by commas. This is just a simple text file. You can see down at the very last, I have a time of one and a P value of one as well. Okay. So let's uh, go on to our Python script now. Uh, we have a Python and MATLAB script. Let me just go ahead and put these, um, I'll just put these side by side. Um, let's see, I'm going to put this uh, move to other view. Okay, I'll just make this just a little bit, um, just a little bit bigger so we can see both of these files. Okay, there it is. Okay, so um, I'm going to just uh, construct both of these at the same time, uh, you know, I have to clear all for MATLAB and then set a, a server. And uh, for uh, Python, I'll specify a server. I don't have to do the clear all, close all. And then I have an application name. For um, MATLAB, it's going to be the same. Okay, and then I'm going to import APM. Uh, now, that was just the, uh, if you want to get that, I'll show you the, the link for that for Python. But in MATLAB, you've got to add path to the APM folder. Okay, so let me just show you that. Uh, this file and this file, you can get those um, from the download link that I'll show you a little bit later. Or you can come back to the AP Monitor um, website and then just select the uh, Get APM Python. Um, and there's the link for it or you can select the uh, get APM MATLAB and there's the link for it as well. Okay, so that's how you get those uh, folders. These are the AP Monitor modeling language and optimization suite um, that you can use it in MATLAB or Python. Okay, let me go back here. So once you have those, um, okay, first of all, I'm gonna do a clear all command and in MATLAB, I'll also do a clear all command. Uh, same thing, I'm gonna load my model file, load my data file, load my model file, load my data file. Okay, just uh, the only difference is a semicolon between these two. Uh, I'm going to set an option, which is, um, you know, the nodes, the number of uh, collocation intervals in each step is four. Um, I'll set my solver equal to three. That's the IP opt solver. Um, I mode six, that's going to be a dynamic optimization. Um, you can check the, um, the, uh, Okay, so let me go here for IMO just to review this one more time. If you come to documentation and then you just search for iMode. Um, okay, and then it will, um, let me just select modes here. You can go one through nine. It gives a little bit more documentation about all the different modes that you can solve in. Okay, um, so same things here, um, same options. Um, and then I'm going to continue on. I'm going to say MV type is one. That's going to be a linear interpolation between each um, U value. I'm going to set my first manipulated variable uh, with the APM info function and then set its status equal to one, meaning on. Uh, set my D cost to zero. That means the delta cost. It'd be the cost of moving the manipulated variable. I don't want uh, the default there, which is just a small cost uh, by default to moving the manipulated variable. 
uh, that helps to smooth out any kind of response, okay? So, um, and then I wanna solve this. Uh, I'll do the same thing uh, in both places. I've configured my problem, loaded the model and data files, now I wanna solve it. Uh, and then just display the output. The one difference here is I print the output. If you're using newer versions of Python, you should do, um, you know, print um, output like that, okay? Um, and then I wanna retrieve my solution. I'll do that in both. In uh, MATLAB, we just have this extra little thing, uh, z equals y dot x, because you return it as a structure. Okay, and then I'm gonna print the optimal solution and do that in both places. Okay, let me make the divider just a little bit on the MATLAB side, because it's bigger. Okay, and then I want to uh, import matplotlib on the Python side, and um, in MATLAB, I can just uh, go ahead and do figure one. Uh, and then I'll create a couple subplots. Okay, do that in MATLAB and Python. You can also separate these by commas if you want to. Okay, and then I want to plot my U value, um, first of all, and then put a legend there and say it's manipulated. Okay, and then I'll also plot my U, say it's manipulated, and then also plot my X1 value. Okay, and then I want to hold on and do X1, X2, X3, and X4, giving them different symbols. Put a legend there, a Y label, X label, and then I'm done, okay? Let me do that same thing in Python as well. Last thing I need to do is just say, show the plot. All right, so there I have my MATLAB and my Python files, okay? So let me go ahead and just, uh, let's go ahead and run these now and look at our solution. Um, Okay, so there, I'm just gonna open up IDLE and uh, go ahead and run it. And uh, let's see the solution that it returns us for this, um, for this problem. Okay, so IPOP solved it in about two seconds. And here we can see in, in Python, we can see our profile of U values. Okay, so there's the U values. And uh, you can see it at a certain point, about 0.25, it transitions from an upper value of 10 uh, down to a value of about zero, and then goes back up to a value of 10, and you can see this arc here. Okay, so um, the goal was to minimize the value of x4 at the end. Okay, so that, um, that value of x came up and then was minimized. Uh, the legend's in the way a little bit, um, but um, but uh, this is the optimum, optimal uh, result here. You can see all four uh, states. Okay, let's do this also in MATLAB. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and go ahead and open up MATLAB. Um, and just as MATLAB's opening, one thing to notice when you retrieve the solution, it also returned a CSV file just with all of the values here. Um, so you can see your state profile uh, versus time. You can plot the same things in uh, Excel if you wanted to. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and close that. Okay, so here's the MATLAB version. If I click F5 or run, then it's gonna go ahead and run this. Okay, so run it, and then let's look at our MATLAB uh, screen. Okay, so it evaluated about two seconds again. I had an optimal solution, printed out the result 0.16 was the value um, at the final time for x2. And uh, let's look at the solution. You can see, you know, very similar results to what we had, uh, exact, uh, exactly the same results that we had in Python. Okay, so um, that is uh, this problem. As I mentioned before, the, the uh, solutions are posted here if you'd like to come and just uh, download them. Um, I'll go ahead and I've posted the uh, the files right here under the benchmark too in MATLAB and Python.